press encryption and uh, I put down uh, this transparency which uh, effectively gives the block diagram of the steps in the encryption. And uh, this being a very long figure does not properly fit into a screen. And so, what I, what I will do is I will take one stage of it, the topmost stage and explain what exactly happens in the uh, disencryption. Now, um, you take uh, 64 bit plain text that means as I pointed out the by plain text by, by plain text we mean unencrypted text. So, the text you take and uh, you cut it up into 64 bit uh, chunks and each 64 bit chunk is separately disencoded. So, um, you got a 64 bit plain text ok. Then you, you permute it, there is an initial permutation. There is not shown as a block there because again it will become too long, but there is a permutation operation ok. That means uh, permutation operation I explain. In other words, the, there will be jumbling of the bits in some specific order determined by some kind of a key. And um, then the 64 bit text is put into two parts L1 and R1 ok. There are two parts and we will deal with each of the parts separately. So, that is as far as this is concerned. Let us go then to the way the key. The key which is used is a 56 bit key. It is not a 64 bit key, but it is a 56 bit key. Uh, you might ask why 56, why not 64, why, why not 48, why not 32, whatever it is. The, the reason why 56 has been chosen is that uh, they found that uh, it is a reasonable key size and for the strength of encryption in terms of the prevailing technology in the 1970s. As I pointed out, DES was invented in 1970s. At that time, a 56 bit, bit key was considered sufficient. So, what again the key is permuted with some permutation operation, then it is divided into two parts and uh, some bits are dropped again permutation and contraction operation takes place and then 48 bits come. Again you drop some bits because here R1 is a 32 bit uh, number and uh, K1 which will come here will be a, again a 32 bit number because you will take uh, some uh, function uh, R1 K1 which is somewhat like the uh, transposition which we looked at. There is uh, we had two steps is not it. So, here it is a table look up the f is a very complex function of R1 K1 where it can, uh, looks at some table look up and all that is involved and also some exclusive R operations and so on. Um, the reason why I am not going to go through this full uh, details of that is because it is a it is not relevant to this course. There are the entire courses are there in cryptography. Uh, in cryptography courses, they give theoretical background of why uh, 56 bits is chosen, how do you determine the strength of the key, and how do you drop bits, what kind of a table is used, and why that table is used. All that is given, given in a, a cryptography book. In fact, there is a book by Schneider and another book by Skillings. Uh, Schneider's book effectively deals with cryptography, the whole book. And uh, Skilling's book has both uh, uh, security and as a part of security, its cryptography is dealt with, and that book also uh, does deal with this in a fair amount of detail. So, those who are interested may kind of go and look at that book. Now, here, uh, this, uh, uh, this 48 bits is effectively. Uh, redu reduced to 32, some dropping is takes place and a key which is essentially involves some table lookup and so on is used and this operation, functional operation is carried out. And then you take the left half 32 bits exclusive are with this result of this uh, operation, this uh, function application on R1 and K1 and then that becomes R2. 
and uh, whereas L1 after this uh, uh, work goes to R2 and R1 becomes L2. There is no nothing which happens here. This is one step and uh, this is again one step here and now this is repeated 15 more times. Okay, that is what is so shown in the uh, uh, earlier slide. You know here uh, this is one step and there are a number of steps it goes on till 16. K 16 is 16th time it, it happens and then uh, the inverse permutation of I p inverse that is initial permutation the inverse permutation is uh, done and you get a 64 bit cyber text at the end of the end of this. Okay. So, effectively you effect have this uh, uh, this kind of a step so 15 more times and then the reverse of this permutation the inverse of this is done and uh, at each step also the, as you can say the key now the 28 bits uh, are taken and made into uh, the next step the next key is effectively the same thing except after permutation and then again this key is used and we go through the whole process again for the next uh, 15 steps. This is primarily the way in which the DES encryption works. And um, now the advantage of DES encryption and why it has been very popular is that you have a chip that is VLSI chip in which the entire algorithm can be uh, incorporated because in, uh, in the algorithm consists of primarily shifting and slowly warring and some uh, uh, taking up some bits from a table and so on. So, it is kind of not difficult to make a make a chip. It is not if as long as the, the volume of business is very high, the semiconductor manufacturers will find it very quite profitable to come up with a chip which is a uh, which is at a reasonable cost. And the advantage from the user's point of view is he just has to put this uh, chip in front of a PC and then the entire entire thing will be encrypted before uh, before in other words at the you can look at it in the other, other point of view that is at the output which is going from the company to the recipient you put this chip and to which you you uh, feed the input blocks as 64 bits and give the key of 56 bits and then encrypted block comes out. And the other end what you really have to do is to use same key and do the reverse of whatever is done. The entire DES uh, encryption method is symmetric. There is um, uh, the, the point really is decryption chip uh, inputs encrypted block block and key and the output is a decrypted block. In other words, the, the same desk chip is used again where you give the encrypted block as input and then the key also has another input and out comes the decrypted uh, block. Okay. So, the effectively it is a symmetric algorithm that is that is one of the reasons why it, it is a uh, it is used uh, very effectively because the same chip can be used for both uh, encryption and decryption as in all these uh, algorithms the algorithm itself is made public. The only thing which is not public made public is the key. So, the sec secrecy lies with the key and so you should not be you should not reveal the key to anybody. If you reveal the key the entire game is lost. So, the key is the is effectively the uh, most important part of any encryption. So, the two points is that uh, um, two points I want to make is that the entire security lies in the key number one. Number two the entire disencryption is simple enough to put into a chip. Number three is that there is a symmetric encryption. In other words the same block which can be used for encryption the, the algorithm is applied, in, applied with encrypted one and then out comes a decrypted um, output that is decrypted uh, uh, thing. Okay. Now, cryptanalysis is the technique of breaking code given samples of encrypted messages. As I said, all in all uh, whenever encryption is done 
there are professionals who are trying to kind of look at how to break the code, particularly in wartime and all that. Uh, and also, suppose your company's secrets wants to be found out by a competitor, uh, he, they may employ some people to whose main job is to guess what the key ought to be. And uh, the guessing of that uh, is done, suppose uh, there are a lot of samples of plain text and encrypted text. So, they got input and the output and they got to guess what the function is, what the encryption function is. Okay. And this of course, is uh, not easy. The easiest, the, the, the what I would say the brute force technique is to, uh, uh, is to uh, try out all possible keys. See, there are uh, 56 bit key. So, there are there are uh, 2 to the 56 possible ways in which you can uh, change the key. And of course, there are tables and permutations and so on. So, there are ob obviously fairly large number of trials you have to do, but then nowadays computers are becoming very fast. So, we got enough uh, samples of plain text, unencrypted text, you can be just trying with a whole lot of uh, these and of course, a parallel machine work, works wonderfully for this because each of the uh, processes can be looking at one different key and all of them can be running the same algorithm. Okay. So, if it is a, a parallel machine with uh, 500 processors, effectively 500 uh, keys are being tested in one, one cycle. So, with all this modern technology, it has been found that uh, with increasing speed of computers, this key can be found in less than 12 hours with a, with a fast computer, maybe a parallel computer. And I, I, if I, if uh, 1 million decryptions per microsecond, if it is able to do, then in 12 hours, you can actually by brute force find out the key. Thus, thus is practically useless now, because most current machines are having fairly this kind of speed, because uh, machines of teraflops range are now available. And uh, so, it is uh, one, one, one has to get an access to that teraflop machine. Even if you do not have access, if you have got a huge number of PCs, idle PCs, you can make all of them work simultaneously and uh, effectively get uh, speed up. And each PC is reasonably fast nowadays, because with uh, something like uh, uh, 2 gigahertz uh, uh, servers and so on or even 1.5 gigahertz desktop, if you have got a company has got uh, 500 desktops, which is very common you can able to kind of use the ideal CPU cycles and be able to decrypt. Okay. That is the reason why this is considered practically useless because originally as I said it was invented in 1970s. So, one has to find new methods. Okay. So, new more secure symmetric encryption algorithms are needed. An extension of DES called triple DES is uh, shown to be more secure. In fact, triple DES is what is currently being uh, used fairly extensively. Okay. And let us look at what is triple DES. Triple DES as the name implies, applies DES three times over. Okay. The algorithm is that you take the plain text, okay, apply DES encryption once. Okay. And having applied DES encryption once with one key K1, pick another key and do a decryption. See, as I pointed out, the decryption with a different key will not get back the plain text uh, because unless this and this are equal, the decryption will effectively, uh, you know, only if the two, two are equal, decryption will give, back, give, give back the plain text. In this case, it is useless. So, the two different keys are used. And so, this will decrypt and decryption nothing but encryption because the same algorithm is used with a different key. And then you encrypt again with uh, third key K3. Okay. And uh, one might wonder why am I using E, D and E. The simple reason is it is kind of symmetric applying one way and the other way which you will see uh, very quickly. 
So, the, it is a very simple way of having a symmetric encryption and the decryption is to effectively ap apply it in reverse. Okay. So, the triple dash effectively, um, so as I said remember there is an decryption of an encrypted plain text the different key is almost same as another encryption. Okay. This is true as encryption and decryption is the same algorithm. Okay. This again I am, so now you take a plain text okay. and you ap apply, uh, you see the plain text k1 you apply encrypt it, with k2 you decrypt which is again equal to another encryption and uh, with k3 you encrypt and you get a cipher text. Now, there are three, three different keys that are being used and three different encryption steps, each one of them use a 56 bit key and of course, the input block is 64 bit block and the decryption is the reverse. That is you apply k3 first encrypted and then apply k2 and, uh, and then apply k1 in the reverse and you get back plain text. So, you can see the symmetry between this and this and that is the reason why uh, this kind of a three step process with of course, the in between being a decryption step is being done in a triple desk. Using desk thrice is equivalent to having a key desk key length of 168 bits. In other words, three different keys of 56 bit each 3 times 56 168. So, the strength of the encryption in other words, the time required to decrypt it now becomes very, very large and brute force method to break a triple dash with uh, 10 to the 6 decrypts per microsecond will take in this case people have calculated 5.9 times 10 to the 30 years that of course, is, uh, you cannot even, even imagine 10 to the 30 years. So, even if suppose you have an increase in speed of 10 to the 12 okay, in foreseeable future. Uh, then the number of years will come down to 30 minus 12, okay, which is 18. Okay. So, 10 to the 18 years, which is again still a lot of time. So, brute force just cannot be applied on triple dash. So, people are quite satisfied with triple dash as a symmetric encryption scheme. Okay. And of course, it, it is the same old chips can be used except that you do three different, use three different keys and you got to have a, a, the problem of distributing three different keys to the person who is going to receive it. So, that is a major problem with any, any symmetric encryption. That is a key distribution problem. Okay. So, that even 10 to the fold increase in the computer speed will make the triple dash quite secure against brute force. The only reason this used the middle step is triple dash is to allow the encryption using single desk hardware okay and uh, single will say it will be popular in the next foreseeable future and uh, but triple desk of course has got two disadvantages uh, it, it cannot be implemented in software easily okay because all these steps as i pointed out uh, changing things around and uh, and dropping dates and permutations and so on and 64 steps are each encryption step and decryption step and three such steps if you want to program it is going to take the, the program is going to take a long time to be able to uh, uh, do the encryption whereas a chip will do it very fast. So, the disadvantage software cannot be used you have to only use hardware. So, hardware use of course is sometimes considered more expensive because particularly small companies cannot be just, just going you know going on a uh, go and buy these things okay and uh, so a new standard was explored in other words uh, is there any other method of uh, encryption which is more modern and so the national institute of standards technology of usa uh, put out a call for proposals for a new crypto system uh, called an advanced encryption system with the requirements that it must provide a high level of security that is difficult to decrypt in a finite time. That is in other words it should be at least as strong as the triple dash that is 10 to the 10 to 8 years to decrypt if you use brute force. Okay. Must be completely specified and easily understood. In other words the algorithm must be completely specified, it should be easily understood by people and security must reside in the key and not in the algorithm okay. uh, as usual because all the algorithms are made public 
only the key is not made public okay and must be available to all users. So, there should be not, not be any kind of a restriction on the use because what happened was with this and all that the American government put a restriction on the use of uh, this and some, some what they call strong encryption methods outside of America. Uh, and also uh, if you are uh, what you know, if you are not considered their friend then you are considered their enemy and uh, your enemy is not allowed to use this and there are export controls on that they put. Like for instance India was under that export control and watch list for a number of years. Uh, now of course there is a little bit of a um, thaw in the relationships. But by and large the government should not have a uh, power to deny the technology outside of the country. So, that is that they put as a requirement. Adaptable for use with diverse, diverse applications. That is not only on a computer, but even on credit cards to ensure security. That means algorithm must be uh, good enough at the same time easy enough to be put into a, a chip which can be encapsulated in a in credit card. Implementable economically uh, electronic device that means uh, it can use a, a, a chip for doing it. Must be efficient to use both a uh, software and hardware. See unlike this they wanted AES to be easily put in software also ok. So, because uh, you are one does not have to invest in hardware. Must allow one to validate it that is one, one the, the, the algorithm must be valid, validatable by mathematicians to find out how much time will be taken to kind of uh, decrypt ok. Must be exportable that means uh, as I said the country cannot put a restriction on export. No trap door, that trap door is a secret method of actually uh, which the, the governments try to keep to try to kind of uh, break the code and uh, this trap door is are all used uh, particularly if suppose a government has as monopoly on uh, say desk type chip, chip desk type chip then they can intentionally put a put a trap door to be able to kind of uh, break the code by essentially kind of uh, uh, getting some values of key uh, by snooping inside and uh, with with some technology they may have ok. That is a very dangerous thing and that should not be allowed ok. And must use 128 instead of 64 bit blocks 128 bit blocks uh, are, are 192 or 256 blocks. So, large blocks should be usable ok. So, the security becomes higher. So, in the blocks in this was only 64 bits whereas uh, in the advanced encryption standard the blocks can be 128, 192 or key lengths you might say. The blocks are uh, and key length because block, the block size and key lengths are equal must be 128, 192 or 256 depending on the level of security desired. In October 2000 they kind of I mean uh, they put out this advertisement for uh, many groups in the world to compete for this proposing the advanced encryption standard. After considering a number of different entries which are came from all over the world, they finally decided on picking something which is proposed by do two Dutch mathematicians uh, and it is the two people's name was uh, R I J N Rain and and uh, D D A E L the doll. That is the pronunciation in in uh, the correct pronunciation. So the the actual word is R I J J N D A E L and pronounced Rain doll. Rain doll is the new advanced encryption standard algorithm, and uh, this algorithm is now available for people to implement and some people have started implementing chips for this and expected that this will be a very very secure standard which will be much better than the desk type standard for a long time to come. The, the, the algorithm is fairly complicated. So, those who are interested can look at this website 
uh, NIST because NIST is the one which uh, put out the uh, ads for this uh, and then they are the ones who kind of sponsored the whole thing. So, NIST dot GOV because the government is a government organization slash AES advanced encryption standard. This website gives the complete details of the algorithm. So, I am not going to go beyond that except to say that this is a new type of algorithm which is in the horizon which is going to replace the uh, triple S. Now, the public key encryption is somewhat different from the, the so far what we have talked about is called a private key encryption ok, because the, the key is private to the two parties. That is I, I who did encrypt have a key and I have to make that key known to the recipient for him to be able to decrypt ok. Transmitting the key without compromising the key that is without the key getting public is difficult because if you send it by uh, email definitely somebody is going to get hold of it and uh, so you should probably send it by some other means by post or whatever. The other problem is for each partner you must have a different key and so you have, a, have a database of all your partners and uh, all their keys and that can be quite a horrendous thing. Suppose you are having a huge number of partners to with whom you want to correspond, then the number of keys you have to maintain can become very large and it should not, you cannot confuse one with the other and that should be extremely safely kept. Now, if that becomes public, everybody is compromised ok. So, um, only way to make it absolutely secure is for every transmission use a different private key ok and that can be still hor be horrendous because every time you use a different key the recipient should also know what key you are going to be using for a what transmission. So, these are all the problems with private key encryption. So, people were looking for newer methods which are somewhat which will eliminate this key distribution problem which is a major impediment to the use of symmetric key encryption. And uh, they came up, they came, they in fact people have been looking at this question for a lot of time, there is almost uh, 50, 60 years people have been searching for a solution to this key distribution problem and finding out some method of encryption where key distribution is made unnecessary and that there finally, uh, back in around the 80s uh, a method came out called a public key encryption method which eliminates the key distribution problem ok. That is a tremendous advance in the area of cryptography. Now, uh, in the case of a public key encryption there is a pair of keys for each organization that is each organization has only two keys you do not have to maintain anything about uh, anything like a, a, a table of keys. So, every organization has got only two keys, one they call the private key which they keep secret as a name implies, and the other is called the public key. Public key is publicized to everybody, the whole world knows your public key, otherwise you put it in your website. And if your website anybody wants to correspond with you, they look at your website and know what your uh, public key is ok. So, if you want to send some encrypted message to the, that person whose public key you have found out from the website, you use the, his public key and um, encrypt with your, your you know you take your text and uh, take the plain text ok and encrypt it with uh, B's public key because you know B's public key the recipient, recipient is a, a his public key is known to you. So, you can encrypt it using that key. The encryption method is also publicized what encryption is used ok that is not a secret only the private key is secret. Now, when, when the cipher text goes to the recipient B now, what he can do is to decrypt it using his private key and he will get the back to the plain text. So, you can see the key distribution problem is completely eliminated because what you do is 
if you know the public key of the recipient, you will just use the public key encrypt and then the recipient uses private key and decrypts. Okay. That is a straightforward uh, kind of a very interesting kind of symmetric method again, because uh, if you encrypt with your private key, he can decrypt with the, with the public key. Of course, the, that is a, uh, that of course has got a, an application uh, in a digital signature, which we will look at later on. But when you want to send a message, you would normally use the public key of this person because uh, the, uh, the person ha only is the, was the only intended rep recipient's public key, and the intended recipient has his own key to decrypt. Okay, so this is a very very simple idea. Now the question is, how do you pick the two keys? And there are also an algorithm has been suggested, fairly straightforward. Pick two large prime prime numbers P and Q. Let the n be a product of these two primes and find a, you know find out p minus 1 times q minus 1, find a number phi, where find a number e relatively prime to phi. There is uh, find out the GCD of uh, phi and e and uh, you know, now you, you have a you take phi, phi you know okay, they calculated it and uh, find out a value of e so that the GCD of phi e equal to 1. Okay. So, uh, now that uh, uh, e is r's public key. Okay. So, you have find out and find a number d which satisfies the relation d times e mod phi, phi is known is equal to 1 and d n is the r's private key. That is the triple d and n n of course is the product of two primes that is known. The individual primes are not known. Okay, nobody knows p and q, but everybody knows the value of n. Okay. And um, you effectively can find out the, uh, the uh, d of course is not known to anybody because you find out the, the, um, the, the public, public and private key pair is found out from the algorithm. I will give an example of and now the, the steps in the encryption and decryption, let the plain text be t, encrypt t using r's public key t to the power e mod n is uh, cipher text. Decryption is c to the power d mod n. There is both n and d should be known to encrypt. Similarly, both n and d should be known to decrypt. Okay. n is known, the product is known, the individual values are not known. Okay. So, that is the whole idea. This example is a tie example. I will give a tie example to illustrate the method. In the practice, the primes p and q will be very large to ensure uh, the uh, actual good encryption. Okay. So, uh, but I will take a very simple tie example to show how the algorithm works. So, the, uh, this is called the RSA algorithm. See, RS, the, uh, okay, the RSA algorithm is named after the uh, three people who uh, uh, together kind of uh, invented this this method. Okay, and um, so the it is commonly known as RSA algorithm. The two three professors working at at uh, MIT who invented this. So pick. I am showing small prime numbers because I can work them out very simply on the uh, while going along, but actually in practice p and 3 are very large. So, pick uh, as prime numbers some two prime numbers 3 and 11 and uh, n is 33 of course, messages to be encrypted should be smaller than 33 because if you do the, you know if you do letter by letter encryption of English alphabets a to z, I think this, this will work with a to z because each character has got to be encrypted with this okay. and uh, the, the a to z could be encoded as 1 to 26 which is okay. All right. Now, take uh, the phi as p minus 1 times x, q minus 1. So, p minus 1 is 2, q minus 1 is 10, you get 20 okay. and uh, pick a number relating the prime to 20, there is 7, 7 is not you know 20 cannot be divided by 7. Okay. So, public key of r is 733. Pick a private key of R to find, by, uh, find, find D from relation D times uh, E mod, mod 5 equal to 1. So, D times 7 mod 20 equal to 1 gives D equal to 3. 3 times 7 is 21, mod 20 is 1. 
So, the private key of R is 333. So, you can find out your private key and your public key. Okay. Each individual can find out his private key and public key by picking some two large P's and Q's and the actual value of P and Q is not made known to anybody, but this is made known to everybody. Okay. So, but then so, so the public key is made known and but this this 3 is what the important thing is, 3 is not made known. See the way you calculate P is by knowing the value of P and Q. Okay. And so, that is the reason why the whole thing works. In other words, the, the example exactly clarifies the actual algorithm. Okay. So, now this becomes your, uh, so let the message be CODE, use codes C, uh, A, A, if I, if I use codes uh, A equal to 1, B equal to 2, C equal to 3 and so on, C is 3, O is 14, D is 4, E is 5. The message is uh, 3, 14, 4, 5. And now, now I encrypt the message. 3 to the power e mod n, 3 to 7 mod 33 is 2187 mod 33 is 9, 4 into the 7 which is the second digit mod 33 is, is this number, 4 into the 7 is the large number, mod 33 is 20, 4 to the 7 mod 33 is, is 16 and 5 to the 7 mod 33 is 14. So, cipher text is 9, 20, 16, 14. That is the input text was, uh, you know, as, as I, uh, I, I saw 31445 and the output is uh, 9, 20, 16, 14. Now, the decryption is fairly straightforward. You take uh, your, your uh, public, you know, your private key is 3 and 33. So, you use uh, 9 cubed uh, mod 33, okay and it's, uh, it is 721 mod 33, you get back 3 and 20, 20 cube mod 33, you get 14, 16 cube mod 33, you get 4 and 14 cube mod 33, you get 5. So, we get the original text 3, 14, 4, 5. So, the simple idea is essentially to be able to uh, encrypt with the public key of the recipient and the recipient decrypts it with his own private key. Okay. So, each person has got a pair, a, a public key and a private key and each person finds out his own public and private keys by using the RSA algorithm and because the security of RSA encryption is dependent on the fact that factorizing of a large prime number to its factor is very difficult because the P and Q are known to him and what he makes known to you is only the product. If you find out the P and Q from the product, then you can use that algorithm to find out his private key and that will nullify the whole thing. So, the entire secrecy of the algorithm lies in the fact that factoring a large prime number which is a product of two primes into individual prime numbers <coughs> is uh, very, very difficult. It takes a long time. It is not impossible, but if you use a brute force technique to do that, it will take forever. That is the reason why the primes which are picked to make the product are at least something like maybe sometimes 120, 120 digit primes. So, very large primes and you use very large primes to find out your public and private key. And what it implies, use very large primes, is that the encryption time is going to become very large. That is what I am going to explain. You see, it is first of all symmetric. That is, in other words, uh, it is a symmetric algorithm in the sense that the private and public key are interchangeable in, that's, in that sense. Uh, in other words, if a text, plain text is encoded with a private key of S, uh, the, it can be decrypted using the public key of R. Okay. Uh, this will find later on as I said for creating digital signature. Digital signatures uh, use effectively the idea and um, as I pointed out 3 and 33, 7 and 7, uh, 73 was the found which was found. Now, we found out that you know actually uh, we found out a pair in the previous uh, slides. Now, I want to show that it is symmetric. See, when we the, uh, encrypt a plain text using S pri SS private key and send it to R, R must be able to decrypt with SS public key. Okay, that is sender's public key. 
assume plain text encrypted with SS private key and get a cipher text 14 cubed mod 33 and you uh, get back the 14 after applying the same algorithm over again 5 to the 7 mod 33 ok. So, so the point is that the private and public key are interchangeable in that sense ok. RSA public key has two keys private key and public key. It is implemented in software say because it uses two large prime numbers and the entire algorithm as we can as we saw requires a lot of arithmetic to be carried out on very large uh, number of digits. So, a hardware implementation of an RSA algorithm is, uh, is not very economically feasible and uh, because also each uh, Receive each, each person who is going to find out a pair of uh, private and public key is going to have to kind of uh, work with two large prime numbers which are arbitrarily picked, nobody else knows. So, to come up with a, a chip which will work arbitrary primes is fairly tough and so uh, normally chips are not there, it is normally a software implementation. It is a computationally complex to encode plain text and decode cipher text using an RSA because of the large prime numbers. So, it is implemented in software and also because of the complexity finding out powers and then uh, finding out mod and all that is a very long process. So, the decryption takes time, takes a long time and uh, this on the other hand is very fast. Uh, even though the problem is uh, the key distribution problem ok. And um, so, RSA is uh, that way, uh, this is completely simple and very fast you can as I said can put in hardware. Each communication between two businesses can use a different key provide key securely exchange. In other words the whole point is we ask the question can we combine RSA and this? in such a way that the advantage of this in terms of speed of encryption and the advantage of RSA which is the known the which is the need you know the, 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 the require requirement of, of uh, transmitting keys to your partner is unnecessary. So, these two are the two distinct advantages in this it is symmetric key very fast, but you have, a, you have a key distribution problem. In RSA it is again uh, public key private key uh, to everybody has got two keys, public key is known to everybody, private key is only known to you and there is no need for a key distribution problem because public key is hypothesized to the world and uh, disadvantage is that it is slow. Okay. So, but it is quite strong as an encryption method it is very strong. So, the question which I have been asked by people is can I marry DES and RSA to retain some of the advantages of DES namely speed and some of the advantages of RSA which is that of avoiding key distribution problem. As I again pointed out earlier a DES algorithm will work very effectively if I am used to if I am using different keys for different chunks of messages. So, that even if an enemy is able to get hold of a lot of chunks of messages because it is being encrypted by different keys at different times it will be extremely difficult for him to do brute force decryption because he does not have enough samples to do a brute force decryption. So, this is a question which is raised and the answer fortunately is yes you can marry uh, the two um, and I will see how it is can be done by looking at this very simple picture. Now, the sender if he wants to send a long plain text what he does is he sends the key ok because the key the problem as I said is key distribution problem. So, instead of having a key distribution problem where you keep a database of keys and so on, you pick an arbitrary key and use that arbitrary key 
and encrypt that key using RSA because the key is a very uh, not a very large number and only one number one single number this encryption even though by software will be very fast. So, you do a, an encryption of a key using the public key of the intended recip recipient receiver and you send it the receiver can decrypt it using his own private key and get hold of the key. Okay. So, the key distribution problem is somewhat solved in the sense that the key is sent using RSA and for every different plain text I can send a different key. And now, a plain text using the same key is encrypted with, with this and because this person knows the key, he can decrypt it using a desk chip. Okay. So, now the plain text can be a very long plain text. Okay, and uh, because the key is going to change from from each plain text to the next plain text, the receiver, you know, there is a reasonable security in the which resides in the key. So the uh, the uh, person who is trying to kind of break your code will find it difficult to break the code. And if, if I further if I use triple dash here, it is almost impossible to use it to break it. Okay. The key distribution problem is completely eliminated. But of course, one question you can ask is if the plain text is very long, maybe the enemy can kind of look at this long one, cut it up into pieces and try to kind of guess uh, the keys because he has got enough things. What you can really do is cut up the plain text into uh, different parts and for each part, it may not be 64 bits, but maybe uh, 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 640 bits and uh, for each 64, 640 bits you can use a different key. That way it is almost impossible for the uh, person to kind of uh, decrypt it. So, the most interesting part is that this is RSA which the key distribution is done by RSA. The encryption is done by a fast hardware and so you are able to combine the advantages of this and the advantages of this to get a, 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 a hybrid, uh, you might say hybrid method which is quite secure. Okay. That is essentially what you have sent. So, if the key can be sent separately encrypted using RSA, then the recipient can use this to decrypt this. We look, you know, so that is what is being done by combining. Okay. And the uh, main advantages I have already pointed out, key sent along with the plain text encrypted using RSA, key is small fast to encrypt and decrypt. Each transaction using DES can have a different key, higher security and also fast. Key directory is not needed. So, these are all the advantages which, which uh, accrue because of the uh, fact that I am able to uh, combine both of them. Okay. Um, Of course, this is as far as the uh, uh, encryption issue is concerned. Okay. To, to very quickly kind of uh, do a, a review of what I have said, because I, I probably went a little fast in, in these uh, transparencies, but let me very quickly kind of recapitulate what we have done. What we started out with was that we started out with a symmetric key encryption using a digital encryption uh, what I would say is digital encryption standard DES. Okay. And when I use the digital encryption standard, I said that the standard uses a 56 bit key, cuts up the messages into 64 bits, encrypts each 64 bit message with a 56 bit key by using a very complex permutation dropping and left right uh, interchange and some exclusive wiring and so on. Primarily it is a combination of what I would call permutation and transposition that is what it did. And what we found out was that the DES applies it the same algorithm 16 different times such a way as to kind of improve the security. In spite of that, 
because of the fact that brute force techniques can be used to find out the key in, and with, the, with the in, can increase in speed in computers you can guess the key in reasonable time a single guess which is being great advantage is that you can put in hardware have been found not very useful. So, one went for a triple DES, but the same DES algorithm is applied three times over and um, this gives you a security which is very good because brute force techniques will take forever to uh, decrypt. Here three different keys are used and three steps are used encryption, decryption, encryption. Because DES is symmetric, the, the triple DES is also symmetric and that is the reason we use E, D and K. And so, at the end of that, we said that triple DES is very, very secure. However, still it has got the problem of key distribution. Key distribution is a major difficulty with any symmetric key encryption system. So, people searched for newer methods and the newer methods where key distribution problem has got to be eliminated. So, key distribution problem is eliminated by the algorithm called RSA algorithm. The RSA algorithm uses a method where the encryption is done with a public key of a recipient which is made public and the recipient decrypts it using his own private key. Because his private key is known only to the person, there is no need for public key distribution because anybody who wants to send a message to you can use your public key which is found in your website. And when you receive the message, you can decrypt it using your own private key. So, key distribution problem is eliminated, but the disadvantage is the RSA algorithm depends on the, its security depends upon the fact that two long, large prime numbers, the product of two large prime numbers which is made public as a part of the, part of the public key the public key consists of two digits, one is a product to two prime numbers and the other is the public key which is determined from the values of the primes by the person who is creating his public key. We gave an algorithm which uses fairly straightforward arithmetic, GCD, mod and things like that. And so, one can use an algorithm because algorithm is made public. Only the prime numbers are not made public. So, prime numbers are secret with you and you create your public key private key pair which consists of each, each, each key consists of a pair n and some, uh, some, some key called e which may be a, which, which is a, a public key and n another number called d you might say arbitrarily which is your private key. n d you keep you to yourself and n e you make known to the, to the public. Now, what you do is having publicized this you anybody can kind of uh, you know send a message to you using the RSA encoding and you can decrypt it. However, the negative point is applying the RSA algorithm requires a fair amount of arithmetic calculations with large primes, it is very difficult to implement it in hardware. So, it is a software method. The software method also is very slow because the fact that numbers are very large, but still the greatest advantage of that is the elimination of the key distribution problem. So, now you got the RSA 
where everybody has got a private key, public key pair, and we got a very nice method of, uh, of exchanging messages without any possibility of, uh, of something, some, somebody else, you know, the gain, the, it, has been it has been found that the security lies in the uh, uh, prime numbers. So, when you, you pick up very long prime numbers, security lies in the fact that it is impossible to factor a product of two primes. What I mean by impossible is that brute force technique will take forever to do the factoring. We require a very, very fast machine and it will take years to use, you know, if you use brute force. And that is the reason why it is considered quite secure. The longer the prime number you pick, the more secure is the RC code. Because of the fact that it is a software implementation, you ask the question, can I combine a hardware implementation which is fast with a software implementation which is sl slower, but which can be tolerated if it is used with a very small number. And so, that is how where we came up with uh, this idea of combining both. We said that the key is a very small one, it is only a tuple, two digits. So, that key can be encrypted with RSA and the time taken to encrypt will be very small. And the key distribution problem is eliminated because the key with which I am going to encode okay, is, is the one which is being sent by RSA. So, the recipient of course, uh, using RSA can find out the key and I use the same key for encrypting using DES. And now, because I am changing the key for every different message, even if DES is weak, one cannot actually, you know, decrypt it easily and triple DES is very strong in any case. Okay. So, the hardware is very fast. So, plain text which can be very long plain text is the same very fast and key is changed for every different every plain text and so, you got a very very nice marriage between RSA and DES and gives you a very uh, secure method without having a disadvantage of key distribution. Now, again RSA is also symmetric, just like DES is symmetric. The symmetry of RSA can be used very effectively in what is known as digital signature. And I will talk about digital signature in certain amount of detail next time, because the digital signature is very important in electronic commerce. So, I will stop at this point and carry on with uh, talking about digital signature next time.